everyone and welcome back to the Davy Nation. So today we are talking about the Raspberry Pi 4 and what you can jam it into and what you can play on it. So let's check it out. So today we are working with the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model. We also opted for the three heat sinks for the chipset on the motherboard there. And we also got a small Noctua fan that we can run off the Pi itself. We also went with some USB extenders 3.0 so that we can use the front IO of the PlayStation 2 housing. All right, so for me, the Raspberry Pi had two jobs to do. It has to play some retro games, look okay. I guess it's got a third job too. It's also my teleprompter. So let me take you through how I took just my PlayStation 2, turned it into a case for a ras the Raspberry Pi. This build is very straightforward. All I had to do was disassemble the PlayStation 2, take out all of the parts that I didn't want to keep for the front fascia of the actual device and then replace them with all the other new Raspberry Pi parts that I wanted to. So I started doing that by taking all of these screws out and pulled out the middle portion of it, which was all wrapped in a back plane, which basically took all the PCB out. And then I took a Dremel, Dremeled out the controller and memory card holders, which you're looking at now, which has the fan mounted on it right now with just some, some glue. Um, and then that pulls air through the memory card slot and pushes it down through all of the different uh, pieces of the um, Pi, which then leads us to the USB ports. I wanted them to work. I wanted them to be as just look exactly the same. The different color didn't bother me, but be able to like plug my keyboard and mouse or whatever peripheral I needed into the Pi and interact with it without having to take it out of the enclosure. There's a teardown for the PS2 on ifixit.com if you guys are interested on that. Link to that down in the description. Um, but I also didn't do that, I mean, that crazy amount of work to get this to fit in there. Um, so I'd recommend doing it with other consoles that you don't use anymore. It gives you the shape that you re remember, but with more functionality. Let's move on to software. So. As you can see for the software, we just fired it up and I have a base version of the uh, Raspbian software on here running as my overlay so that I can still use it as just a regular desktop Pi. And I also have RetroPie installed so I can queue up the command line and start that when I want it, but also keep it as just a regular Pi in case we need to use the internet or the other stuff that I use it for is uh, the teleprompter functions that I was talking about earlier. So, I mean, I also have these set up through the USB ports on the front of the PlayStation. So I thought that was pretty cool. You can see it's like all I'm using on the front just to use the regular USB ports. So I can sit it back under my TV when I'm not using it. And it just look kind of fits in there and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you're like, whoa, it does this too, dude, dog, what up? Like I said, Raspbian's installed. You don't, I don't need to show you how to do that. There's a link below for that as well. RetroPie is installed as well with all the favorite ROMs that I like on there. That There's a link below as well for that. How that works, all I have to do is open the command line. And since it's already installed, I might even be able to, yeah. So all I have to do is, since it's saved in, like it saves a cache of the different line items you've typed in. So all I have to do is press up, enter, and then it, loads up the emulation station with all the other software that I like. I don't remember what I set it to. Um, I usually have, so this Pi has a Bluetooth controller on it, so I usually have the, um, shush you. Yeah, so you can see that all the games work and the, it looks like a PlayStation. I usually have an 8-bit do controller hooked up to this so that I can, I usually also play it on the TV. So I used to have the GameCube, the old school GameCube uh, Pokemon, or Pokemon basically the only game I played. The uh, Game Boy adapter, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to do with this. Like all the games I used to play, load them back into here, have them on there and ready to go, instead of paying for like one of those 100 game boxes that I'm not gonna play 90 of the games and then probably one or two of them I actually will. But the whole thing is you can hook as many, I mean as many Bluetooth items as you want up to this, so you can play as many players as the game will let you play. So another thing that I use this for is my teleprompter. So the webpage I use is down in the description and how you, 
what you can see is I usually full screen this, press play and put a piece of glass up like this with the camera looking through it and then you can read straight off of it while the camera lens can see through it so that it's you're technically not seeing it with the lens. So, and it's cheap, it's way cheaper than buying like an iPad for this or anything else. I mean, this was 50 bucks and like an hour of labor. Another use case for this that uh, a lot of people like is the a pie hole, which is the router level ad blocker for your home network so that it, it basically has a white a whitelist or it has a list of known like ad sites and it'll block that incoming traffic. So when you see a web page, you won't see all the ads on the sides or there's some stuff that it'll block and some stuff it won't block. So I thought it was pretty cool, um, and, but it does make you leave it on all the time. It's nice if, if you don't use it very often and you want, you can leave it like hooked up or behind your router or something. So these are just some of the use cases that I came up with for this build. Um, I really like the small form factor of the case. It's a lot bigger than the pie itself, yes, but I mainly chose it because of aesthetics and thought it looked cool, plus the PlayStation wasn't getting used anymore. Some things that I would change though about the build that I did, um, I would add a power switch to it, like an inline power switch so that I could like locate it somewhere on the front. I initially wanted to use the old PlayStation button and route a LED to it so when you clicked it on it like worked exactly like an old PlayStation and also reroute cables so I'd have to buy some extra cable extenders to route the ports like I did with the USB ports to the back of the Pi so that may be some stuff I might do a little bit later when I have some extra time. Um, other than that it's been a pretty fun project and I recommend anybody who wants to do something like this. You can even get, I was also thinking about getting old, like you can grab an old VCR or like an old cassette player or like a Walkman or something like that. Take all the innards out and put a pie in there so you can have like an old Walkman, which the vintage plastic and that kind of stuff looks really cool um, because they don't use the same type of plastics now and modern extrusion and stuff like that. So it'd be cool to put like, I don't know, like an old pie. Like a lot of people use the uh, Altoids tins. I think that's cool too, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And this is what I had to work with. I also had some other Xboxes that were on the chopping block too, but they were a lot bigger than this. I wanted to fit this in like a nice slim package. So that's all I really have for you guys this week. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. If you have any other comments or anything else I should do um, project-wise like this, I this is some stuff I do in my free time. So give me a shout out in the comments below. If you have any questions, I will answer them in the comments below. Other than that, that's all I got for you this week. Davey out.